Welcome to Agronomy Moment. I'm your host, Wendell Cohen. We bring in people who agree with me, disagree with me, and above all, are not afraid to say it like it is. Um, guys, welcome back here to Agronomy Moment. We want to put out a quick update today, and we are excited because it's so much fun to walk these cornfields this time of year when, especially on a day like today, I mean, yeah. it's 81 degrees is what the truck thermometer was saying and the corn is pollinating and some of it has and we're seeing good pollination this year what mm -hmm. i'm seeing and we're just i'm excited about that because it means that we've got well we'll die another day right so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i don't exactly. want to be don't be negative at all but we want to talk just a little bit about though timing the fungicide i want to ask selena some questions about that is when do we do this mm -hmm. and i know we're in this season mm -hmm. it's probably no secret there but tell us a little bit more about what you want to see as we go to the back end, what's too late or what, what's the window we're targeting here? Yeah, so really the prime time is VTR1. The field we're yeah. standing in now is absolutely perfect. Okay. I mean, we've got on this on this year here, which it just fell off, but we basically had everything had pollinated on here. Um, that was kind of the extreme end as far as how far along yep. pollination has got. And then, you know, this one here is still still kind of prime time and, and getting getting pollinated getting there so now is is really the time specifically for this field um to go ahead and make that r1 fungicide timing application well um especially while we've we've got really good conditions i think that the rain here uh, across the state of missouri this past week and um, especially down here in southwest missouri where we were dealing with some pretty high temperatures and some conditions that if they prevailed, I don't think we would be as optimistic as yep. we are today. And the fungicide conversation would um, maybe be at more of a minimum than it is now. But I know that with the current crop condition, folks are asking questions, getting a little bit more excited about making that fungicide pass and going ahead and doing it at R1 whenever we see the highest return on investment. Got it. And so talk a little bit about some of the diseases we might be seeing or things to be looking for and how to identify this. Um, yeah. What's so a lot of a lot of what I've been seeing recently has hasn't been much of an alert as far as its severity. Um, but gray leaf spot is typically one we're we're always going to deal with as, as far as from a foliar standpoint. And that's going to look like um, these rectangular lesions here on the leaves. And these are most generally speaking, just seeing it on, on the lower canopy. But once we start to see these lesions and when they start to add up to about a quarter, quarter size, like the quarter um, size. Like a that, coin. A coin. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's when on the ear leaf yeah. or the leaf below the ear leaf is when we need to maybe consider going ahead and, and doing a fungicide pass for gray leaf spot. Another thing I've been seeing quite a bit of um, around, not in high severity, but common rust um, that hasn't really been alerting as far as its progression. And then um, a little bit of physoderma um, around just these black black spots um, kind of along the, the mid vein here on the corn leaf. And sometimes we also will see that kind of on the shank and then on the stalk as well. So those are some of the, the diseases I've been seeing a little bit more of. A touch of northern corn leaf bite here or there, just kind of depending, but very, very kind of random coming yep. across that. And um, and it will be more cigar shape. Yeah, it'll be more of a cigar shape, oblong kind of lesion uh, that we see there with northern corn. Yeah. Tell me, tell us a little bit. Of, okay, let's go on. Let's shift into a few weeks ahead that could happen is, you know, the southern rust coming in. Let's say we get some southern gulf storms. Mm -hmm. Um, how are we going to tell the difference if we've got Southern versus just like your common rust? Because they're pretty similar. So Southern rust will prim primarily just develop on the, the pustules will primarily develop just on the top side of the leaf surface to where common rust, we will most generally be seeing it on, on the top part of the leaf and on the lower part of the leaf where we see those pustules and in years where we have rather uh, severe southern rust and you walk into a field and you can walk out and your shirt could be orange um, you can wipe that southern rust and usually um, that's kind of another telltale yes. that if, if it your finger comes out orange we probably have southern rust rather than than common or 
And we could have common rust as well, but that's the, yep. how we tell the difference there. Gone. Yep. Okay. Before we go, it might be worth mentioning that um, these are our most common disease we find in here. But our question comes as I'm talking to our northern neighbors mm -hmm. is tar spot. And even since a lot of our listeners are in from all over the Midwest and face this, I think it's something that even in our area, we need to just start having an, a watchful eye for. And what, what would we, if we've seen it in your field, what are you going to be looking for? Yeah, so first of all, I just like to throw out, um, we can handle it. A fungicide will definitely help us tremendously with tar spot. The absolute first most important thing that we need to be doing is scouting our fields. That is number one priority. The second thing is looking at those hybrids that might have more susceptibility to tar spot just so we kind of know where to start that scouting process. And then third management would be the fungicide. On the leaf, what we're going to see with tar spot is um, just little little black dots, uh, little black lesions. And if you if you wet your finger, because typically it's going to look look a lot like fly frass. Um, mm -hmm. And with fly frass, you can actually wet your finger down and wipe the leaf, and the fly the fly frass would come off. With tar spot, if you try to wipe that off, it will not come off. So okay. um, that's one of the ways that we can tell it's there. And also, if you need help, if you need help with identification, um, please con please contact us and let us know. Yeah. Um, and, and we can come out and help. And even if we need to send leaves off to a pathology lab, we can do that as well. Awesome. And thanks for bringing that up about scouting fields. I think that's the most important. And again, with the rain we've had, like you mentioned before, just to underscore mm -hmm. that, it's making a lot more optimism out here. And so far what I'm seeing in fields is a really good potential. We've got a really good potential corn crop. And one more thing I might add with, with those uh -huh. big heavy hitters like a Southern rust or a tar spot, okay. if by chance we would happen to have some pressure of one of those, we can see good return on investment through our three. So if, you know, if okay. now we aren't maybe, maybe seeing it, we're just kind of on the fence um, we can, we can still see a, a return on investment through R3. Okay. So like R3 corn, we can still see a good, um, it's still worth spraying. Yes. Uh, applying. Yep. And typically though, if you get past brown silk, that's kind of what, so what is brown silk again? Remind me what R3 looks like. Is it dough? Or uh, is that brown silk? That's no. Okay. So R1 silk, R2 is blister, R3 yes. is milk. Milk. Okay. Yeah. And then. Okay, so milk stage. Uh -huh. Yep. So right into the milk stage. I just mm -hmm. wanted to remember that because I yep. couldn't remember. Thanks yeah. for helping me out there. Um, so R3, milk stage, um, still seeing a really good return. So mm -hmm. our window is kind of there. And we're in this field here in, in particular, we're not there yet. No. no. And so we have a little time, but let's be getting those things lined up. Planes, yep. whatever you're going to use, helicopters, drones, whatever. Get those lined up and... Trying happen. to be proactive as possible. Yes, because yep. those guys got a lot on their plate right now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, there should be a soybean video that we've done that should either be tagged behind this or I'm going to put it in the link so and you can grab it. may or may not have bloopers. And <laughs> that's up to you to find them and let us know your comments on how bloop the bloopers were. So, all right, thank you for watching. Watch out for that soybean video too because we got some stuff that's, them, them beans are moving fast. Yeah. And they're, they're moving along in their stages um, because of all the heat and everything we've had. So, mm -hmm. see ya. See ya.